Hi everyone, I'm back in the puzzle studio. It's a Saturday morning, it's a very gloomy, rainy day, and I decided it would be a great day to do a video that I've been meaning to do for quite a while, which is a 12 hour puzzle challenge. I have seen a couple of other YouTubers do this, including Karen Puzzles, who of course is the OG, and also the Casual Puzzler, and I will post the links to their videos in the description below so you can take a look at what they were able to do. So I am going to focus mine on Marvel, puzzles because as you can see behind me I have a bit of an addiction I have many many Marvel puzzles that have been accumulating in the puzzle studio some of the ones you can see behind me I've already done some of them are a thousand pieces and I'm not going to be doing those today because I would probably only get through one or 1.25 puzzles so I'm going to be focusing on the 500 and 300 piece puzzles behind me and hopefully I'll be able to get through a couple of them today so just to show you, before I decided to take on this challenge, I had started a 1,000 piece Black Panther puzzle, but that is currently paused on my puzzle board at the moment while I take on this challenge. So here are the puzzles I'm gonna be trying to do today. There is this 500 piece Doctor Strange puzzle from Buffalo Games. Here's a 500 piece Spider-Man puzzle, also from Buffalo Games. You'll sense a theme here, they're all from Buffalo Games. We have this 500 piece Spider-Man and Green Goblin puzzle. This 500 piece Thor puzzle, which is really cool. And if by some miracle I get through four or 500 piece puzzles, I've got this 500 piece X-Men puzzle that I will tack on at the end as an extra dessert. Um, however, I think that my time for 500 piece puzzles probably somewhere in the uh, I don't know, maybe two hour range, but, but considering the sorting and the stress, I'm not really sure I'm going to get four or 500 piece puzzles done, but I thought I better have something here just in case. So this is the group of puzzles I'm going to be looking at. And first I'm going to dig into some breakfast and some coffee, and then I'm going to get back into it and get started. So I'm here with puzzle number one. It's this puzzle of Spider-Man and it's 500 pieces. I'm gonna get going with this and then I'll check in with you after the first one. So during this puzzle challenge, I'm going to be keeping track of my time using uh, my Apple Watch and then I'm gonna be listening to an audiobook probably while I do it. Uh, so I'll check in with you, I'll let you know how it's going. I am planning on not stopping the clock unless I'm gonna take a break for more than a few minutes and at lunchtime, I'll take about 30 minutes or so to eat the other half of the bagel that I started this morning. Alrighty, all right, let's get going. I'm so excited. And I'm starting the clock now. So I just finished the first puzzle. I'm gonna take a quick break and then I'm gonna get into the second one. This one was not so bad. It took me about, I think, two and a half hours. For puzzle two, I'm going to take a little break from Spider-Man and move on to Thor. I actually think this might be the most difficult puzzle because the top section has so much dark uh, color. So I'm gonna give this one a go. Um, apologies for the sound of the steam heat in the background. And I'm gonna get right back into it. I just took a very, very quick break and I'm ready to dive back in.
So I'm a little bit more than halfway through the challenge. I just finished puzzle number two. It was this Thor puzzle, which was a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. The very similar colors throughout were really challenging. And also I didn't realize, but there's this pattern to the puzzle pieces that's kind of almost like a bend a dot pattern. And it's so, so difficult to tell where the pieces go. I'm sorry, I sound a little bit exasperated, but it's because this one really took the wind out of me. So I'm going to take a pause and get a little bit of food, and then I'm gonna continue. So I'm gonna stop the clock for the food, and then I'm gonna get back into it with the next puzzle. So this one took way longer than I thought, but I did pace myself to put this more difficult puzzle earlier on, because I thought that I would wanna do a little bit easier one uh, later as the day goes on. So I've got two more puzzles that I'm hopefully going to get done, during the rest of the 12 hours, but let's see how it goes because this one definitely took a little bit longer than I was hoping. I am back with puzzle number three. It is back to Spider-Man again. I think this one's not gonna be too difficult because you can see I can pick out Spider-Man, the pumpkins, Green Goblin. I think there are enough distinct sections in this one that it won't be too difficult. That's why I kind of chose this one as number three because I think this one will kind of give me my confidence back after the last one, which was definitely a lot harder than I was expecting. So without further ado, I'm gonna get into this puzzle. So I'm making good progress on puzzle number three, but I'm gonna take a little break and have some dinner and then come back to it. Um, I also need to rest my back a little bit because I did not anticipate how much of a strain this would put on my back. So I will be back probably in about a half hour, 45 minutes. I think it's gonna be a pretty late night because I stopped the clock and I'm gonna keep going until 12 hours. So I'll see you soon. Here I am back after taking about a 30 to 40 minute break to have some dinner and watch an episode of Sex in the City with my partner, Rick. And I'm still on puzzle number three. I would say I'm about a quarter to a third of the way done. I've got about four-ish hours left on the clock. And through my puzzling, I've been listening to the audiobook for Harvey Firestein's memoir, which is called I Was Better Last Night. And it's really fun, so I'm enjoying that, and I'm going to keep going. The book is like 12 hours and 30 minutes long. So basically, by the time I'm done with my puzzling for the day, I'll have about 30 minutes left of the audiobook. So... That's good, I'm making some progress with the puzzle and getting through this book at the same time. And I'm looking forward to getting back into it. I'm a little nervous that I won't finish the four puzzles that I was hoping to finish, but I'm gonna tr try my darndest. I just finished the third puzzle, this Spider-Man versus Green Goblin puzzle. I'm sorry to tell you that actually of over 100 puzzles I've done since March 2020, this is the very first puzzle I've had with a missing piece. The missing piece is right here, part of this pumpkin, so it's orange and it's quite noticeable. Um, so that was a bit of a bummer, I have to say, after spending so long on this puzzle. I think it was about two, two and a half hours on this one. but. You never know, maybe it will turn up, maybe it was my fault. I kind of doubt it because I'm pretty good about pieces. Sometimes they stick to my arms or something, but I checked the floor and I checked the chair and I didn't see it. So a little bit bummed about that. I'm going to take a very quick bathroom break, then I'm going to come back and work on the fourth puzzle. And let's see if I can get it done. I've got about two hours and 15 minutes left on the clock. And the last puzzle is this Doctor Strange puzzle. I'm not really sure how difficult it's going to be, but we are certainly going to find out, okay?
back soon. So here we go. This is probably going to be the last full puzzle that I get done, but I'm going to get started on it. It's this Doctor Strange puzzle. I think this one's going to be not too bad. I, that's why I saved it for the last puzzle, because it's got such distinct sections here. You got this kind of like pink fog. You've got his face. You've got the cape. You've got the background. I don't think it's going to be so challenging, but I could be proven wrong. You never know. Sometimes these things are not so easily predicted. almost about to strike midnight and I just ended 12 hours of straight puzzling and I'm about three quarters of the way through Doctor Strange so you know what even though I didn't quite hit my goal I'm still reasonably happy with this so I think what I'm going to do is I'm about to go to sleep because it's way too late and I've been puzzling so long but I think I'm going to wrap this one up tomorrow morning and then I'll come back to you and I will give you some final thoughts about how this process was. So as you saw from yesterday, I got about three and three quarters puzzles done by right around midnight. At that point, I decided I better get a good night's rest. I thought about just pushing through and finishing this puzzle, but I really was pretty exhausted. My back was hurting. My neck was hurting a little bit. My hands were hurting a little bit. I thought it's time to get some rest. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to do this puzzle. I finished my 12 hours but I'm going to put on the timer and see about how much longer it takes me to finish this puzzle. And then I think I'm actually gonna get the 300 piece X-Men puzzle done as well, because you know what, I've got my coffee, it's a new day, I've got a little bit more energy. And then I'm gonna come back and talk to you a little bit about this process and some of my final thoughts on these puzzles. So I accidentally set it to video instead of time-lapse. So I think I'm just gonna let you see the final product on this puzzle because uh, the video is gonna be way too long to compress and put in the video. But this puzzle took me about 35 additional minutes to finish. I basically just had the pink pieces left, so that's all I had to do. I sorted them by piece shape, and then I got those in place. So I'm going to move on to the 300 piece X-Men puzzle and see how long that one takes me. So I'm back to you now at the end of my 12 hour Marvel puzzle challenge. And I'm pleased to say that with a little bit of extra time, I was able to finish five total puzzles. So there were four 500 piece puzzles. There was Spider-Man, Thor, Spider-Man versus Green Goblin, and also Doctor Strange, which I will talk about in a moment, which is not pictured. And then this 300 piece puzzle of the X-Men behind me now. So, Unfortunately, I'm coming to you immediately after a puzzle accident, which is that I had the um, puzzle for Doctor Strange kind of gently taped together and leaned up, sort of similar to this Spider-Man versus Green Goblin puzzle. And it promptly collapsed, fell apart, and crumbled all over one of the other puzzles. 
I'm sorry, I sound a little exasperated because I just cleaned it up and now I'm making this video. So unfortunately I can't show you that puzzle and even more unfortunately I wasn't even able to photograph the puzzle before it crumbled, which was my mistake and idiocy, honestly. But what I will say after this challenge is that I finished three and three quarters puzzles in the 12 hours. Then it took me about 30 minutes to complete the Doctor Strange puzzle. And then once I moved on to the X-Men puzzle, uh, that one took about one hour total. So all in all, I put in about 13 and a half hours on these five puzzles, which is kind of crazy. I spent all of yesterday pretty much from 10 o'clock until midnight with some breaks in between puzzling. And what I have to tell you actually is that if I were to ask myself, would I do another timed puzzle challenge again? You know, not a competition where you're just trying to do it the fastest uh, and it only goes for an hour or two or something like that. But would I do a timed challenge like this where I'm really challenging myself to get a certain number of puzzles done in a limited amount of time? I actually think I would not. And the reason for that is that I found some of the puzzles to be actually less fun when I had my eye on the clock and I was trying to make sure that I got this one done by this certain point so that I could move on to the next one. And, you know, I was, you know, I'm on puzzle four. Am I gonna get it finished in time for the 12 hours? Am I gonna feel deflated if I don't? So some of that pressure that you're putting on yourself is really just not productive. Honestly, jigsaw puzzling is a hobby that I picked up to relieve stress. So adding it in the form of a time crunch is not actually really that fun in terms of puzzling. So would I encourage you to repeat this challenge on your own channel or in your own life and then report back? Not really, honestly, I would say all five of these puzzles were a lot of fun to do. So I definitely encourage you to pick one of them up and to have fun with it. But I wouldn't encourage you to rush through it because yes, I'm glad that I got five puzzles from my puzzle to do stack finished but I don't think I had the maximum amount of fun with each of them that I would have had I just pulled one out per day and done it and moved through them in an orderly fashion. So yes, it was something I suppose I'm glad that I did because I'm glad that I challenged myself to it and got through it and I know that I can puzzle for 12 hours straight. Not that that's a particular, you know, incredible feat, but yes, I've done it once and now I probably will not do it again. So. Before we end this video, I just wanted to give a little shout out to the artists of the puzzles, because one of the things that, if I had a critique on Marvel's, uh, or Buffalo Games Marvel puzzles, it's that they don't always mention the artist of each of the uh, artworks from the puzzles. So I just want to give a quick shout out, I, I wrote them down on an index card, for the amazing Spider-Man uh, number 49. This is a variant cover and it was done by J. Scott Campbell. This one was really cool. You know, a lot of little um, featured players from the Spider-Man universe are in there, which is kind of fun. So then there's also the Mighty Thor number eight, and that has artwork by Greg Hildebrandt. It's also a variant cover. Um, in case you're not a huge comics person, the variant covers usually, they have a main cover that they sell like on newsstands, and then sometimes they'll get notable artists to do variant covers, so they, it's kind of a collector's item that you can get also at the comic book shop. And usually it's the same price, but they have multiple variant covers sometimes for certain issues. This one of Spider-Man versus Green Goblin, I was not able to find out who the artist is. And I was also not able to find out who the artist is for this X-Men puzzle. Uh, this, I think both of these are, are, you know, they're sort of based on the characters. I'm not sure if they came from a comic issue or not. If somebody knows who the artists were for these, definitely leave it below in the comments. And I would love to see who it is. This one, I have a feeling the Spider-Man versus Green Goblin is some kind of known image by a particular artist, but I just don't happen to know who it is and I wasn't able to image search for this and find it. So I would be happy to give them a shout out in the comments on my Instagram if you let me know who it is. And the puzzle that fell apart, the Doctor Strange puzzle, which I'm still heartbroken over because I just finished it this morning and I was so accomplished to have finished it. That was from Doctor Strange number two and that artwork was by Alex Ross. So I would actually love in the future if they would take these comic book puzzles and just put, give a little shout out to the artist. Even if it's just a little credit somewhere, I think it would be a really cool thing to do for the artist. Obviously it's Marvel and they own all the characters. So nobody's expecting that they're gonna, you know, necessarily put a big artist bio or anything. But I just think it's nice to know who the artist is because sometimes, especially with comic book art, you're captivated by it and you kind of want to see what other artwork they've done. Um, for example, I did a 
amazing puzzle that I will show up on the screen for a moment of Wolverine recently. And it was one of the best puzzles that I've done recently. And I found out the artwork was by this artist named Greg Horn, who has a really great Instagram account. Now I'm following him and I'm, I'm happy that I learned about his artwork basically just from this puzzle. So that's just my one thing that I would shout out is I am always happy to learn of new artists and especially in the comic book world, there are so, so many talented artists in this field. And I just think it's nice to give them credit and give them a little bit of recognition. It's not any kind of real ding against these puzzles. They are wonderful and I had so much fun with all of them. So it's just my little bugbear is that I always like it when the artist gets a little shout out or at least a credit somewhere. Um, so I had so much fun with all five of these puzzles. I did manage to take a picture with the Doctor Strange puzzle in the background. So I'm going to show that during this video. It may have already played on the screen, but uh, that's basically all I have to say about these five. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like, you can check in the comments below. I will have Amazon associate links for all of these puzzles that you've seen in this video today. Now, if you click those links, it doesn't cost you anything extra to buy the puzzle, but I get a portion of any qualifying purchases and that goes right back to this channel and to support my puzzling and also hopefully being able to upgrade equipment for this channel at some point, getting a new camera, perhaps a computer, so that I can do a little bit better editing because right now I'm editing on mobile devices. So anything that you could do to use those links if you're buying these puzzles would be a huge help to me and to this channel. And also I will link to the other puzzle challenges that I mentioned earlier in the video. So while I'm not necessarily encouraging you to do your own Marvel puzzle challenge, I do encourage you to try these puzzles because they were a lot of fun you know, I mentioned in another video recently, but Buffalo Games is a really great budget option for puzzles. Most of these puzzles were in the $8 to $12 range, and that's really pretty great considering the amount of time that you spend on the puzzle for the value. And I had no missing puzzles. That's another thing I meant to mention, is that I did end up finding the missing piece for the Spider-Man vs. Green Goblin puzzle, it was on the floor, so that was my error and not Buffalo Games. So happy to rectify that and let you know that there was no missing piece in any of these puzzles. So hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and like the video. Please click the subscribe button so you can check out all the videos that I have coming up. And in the meantime, happy puzzling.